Hey Jeff, uh, Audible Magic, tell me about some of the magic that uh, you're helping create here. Well, our magic is actually based on uh, automated content recognition. So this is a digital audio fingerprint. So we listen to the television show, and with that, we're able to identify what show you're watching and then bring up other content. Other content such as cast and crew information, connecting on Twitter or Facebook, or for advertisements, uh, doing things like uh, allowing you to see extended video, or even uh, presenting you with a coupon to purchase a product. So now you're bringing that up on the same device or on different devices? Well, actually all around. I mean, our, our goal is to be able to have the connected home connected with all the different devices together. And ACR allows you to do that. It's what I call the thread that connects the second screen to the, to the primary screen. But we're also working with um, set-top box uh, manufacturers, chipset suppliers, and also TV OEMs to be able to provide this inside of the connected TV. Now, you've got a couple of different things that you're, uh, you've got a demo here at the booth. Right, right. A um, couple of different uh, use cases um, for right. Audible Magic. Right, we have the, uh, the live TV that we're showing over here where we monitor uh, 90 networks in the US and six networks in the UK so that we can uh, provide uh, immediately uh, recognition of the TV show. So with these particular ones on the iPad, we have an app running, and if we hit the sync button here, this is going to listen to the uh, audio, and even though we're in a real noisy environment here at the, uh, at the show, it's still able to identify this particular show and then bring up the cast and crew information, and this is working with our partner Rovi, who provides us with the metadata for that particular show. And we're also working with the MSOs for, uh, one of the things we have is uh, ad replacement, Mm -hmm. So if we can, uh, if they have an opportunity to resell uh, the ad inventory they have and replace an ad, uh, certain circumstances they can do that, like after three days with network DVR. So we give them an opportunity to listen to that particular ad and then replace it with the ad of their choosing. And this especially comes up in international programming where you want it to be uh, a specific to the, the particular market that you're broadcasting and the original market may not be appropriate for the type of advertising and your audience that you're looking at. So uh, obviously looking at different monetization opportunities oh, yeah. for those for different products. Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. So our, our media synchronization that, uh, that we have uh, with this particular uh, one over here, we're actually showing an old Dick Van Dyke TV show, which is, which is great. And uh, what's happening here is as this is going through, this particular application here is looking at all the different things that are happening in the show. And it gives you an opportunity then to look at the cast and crew information. One of the great things about this that the advertisers like is you can go back and check into the show halfway through and you can see all the ads you missed. So uh, it gives you an opportunity to do a backward and forward on it. So if you want to purchase Mary Tyler Moore's Little Black Dress, you can uh, get a, a purchasing opportunity there. The other, the other thing is that aside from the, the, the second screen, it also works on the primary screen. So if I, uh, if I go up here, and we can see the, on the primary screen, you get an opportunity to see cast and mm -hmm. crew information also. Um, or if you want, You can like the show on your Facebook page. Wow, it's uh, you know walking around here at the show. I'm really starting to understand how how truly pervasive social media is becoming in, in every facet of a, of our electronic lives. The only question I've got really is, is it distracting? Does it become distracting to, for somebody watching the programming? It it does for for people in my generation that are used to sitting down on Sunday night with the whole family and watching the Ed Sullivan Show, uh, which came on just after Lassie. That, that's, a, that's a different paradigm. That's, a, that's a, uh, a, a different way of viewing it. Now, you may have uh, five TVs in a household and everybody's watching their own television. Um, maybe somebody's DVR'd something and they want to watch that now and somebody else wants to watch something on the main screen. So you're getting this fragmented view of what is family TV viewing, but also a younger generation is coming up where they're telling everybody what they're doing now. This is where the Twitter and the Facebook comes to play. Um, the, uh, the, the MySpace, the new MySpace that's happening mm -hmm. and whatnot. So all of those things, yes, they may seem distracting, 
but the, I think the idea is to be able to turn it off when you want to and make it a viewer choice. If it's a viewer choice, then great, you got the best thing going. So one last question, does all this stuff work with live TV as well as uh, recorded content? Yeah, this is all recorded content that we're showing over here. We don't have to do anything pre-production on it. It's all post-production. We have an application that we give the content creators. They run that application, it creates a fingerprint. We ingest that into our database and it's immediately ready for use. We update our database uh, for the recorded content. We update it four times a day. And we're, we're doing millions of lookups per day, working with uh, our partners like Facebook. Excellent, thank you, appreciate the time. Oh, you're most welcome.